So far, we have four virtual machines and all these machines are connected to a private virtual switch. So for example, if you take any one machine, if you look at the network adapter, it is using private. So let's check on DC. And even this is using private. So none of these machines will have access to the internet. So if you want to play with a system to install a few software, you can just change it to external and apply the settings and click OK. And then try to connect to it. And you can see uh, the internet connection is on and you should be able to go to any website and browse or install tools in this particular virtual machine. But we are trying to keep all the virtual machines in a segmented network. So those VMs cannot talk to any of the host machine, cannot talk to the host machines. In the same way, the host machine cannot communicate with these virtual machines. So this way, even if we have a malware or any viruses in any of these devices, it will not affect our host machine. So let's switch it back to private and apply. So now, as you can see, we do not have any internet connection to this virtual machine. So how are we going to get internet access to all these machines in a secure way? So that is where we are going to use um, a firewall called PFSense. So it is similar to a Cisco firewall, uh, but in this case it is all software based and this is free. By installing PFSense and um, using the configuration tools, you will learn a lot about firewall and also how to filter traffic between the host and the virtual machines. So in this session, we will see how to download PFSense and install. So let's open a browser. And Google for PFSense. So it is the most uh, trusted open source security software. And this is um, a good place to learn a lot of things. They have training, they have a lot of um, tours available within the site. And you can, you can spend some time in the site to learn a lot of things. So let's download the latest version from the site. So let's uh, pick uh, the 64-bit version and the CD image and click download. And I have it already downloaded on my system. So now let's uh, create a new virtual machine based on that image. So let's uh, give it a name PFSense. And we are going to save it in a different location. the CVMs and select the folder and uh, we will keep it generation 1 and uh, one, rev one GB should be plenty for this and uh, we will connect to the external interface or the switch. Let's allocate 20 gigs and uh, click on next and we will point it to the right ISO location. So finally, if everything looks good, let's finish it off. And let's um, go to the settings. And uh, we have an external virtual switch, but we need to add another network adapter to connect to the internal network. So let's pick private from the list. 
So this uh, PF sense will have two virtual switches, one external and one internal. So you can confirm that here. So let's connect it and um, start the installation process. So when it boots, you got to caps carefully watch the messages. At some point of time, you will see a message called I for installer and you have to press I on your keyboard to start the installation process. I will show you when it comes and it should be, yeah, if you look at here, it's, um, if you press the I, then it goes to the screen and um, you can accept all the settings and let's pick the uh, easy install. Click OK. This will take a couple of minutes to install and um, after it installs, we should be able to do the configuration for PFSense. Pick standard kernel. And uh, click, click on standard kernel and click OK. And now uh, let's go and reboot the system. So when it reboots, uh, make sure to eject the CD-ROM. Otherwise, it will try to keep installing. So you go to eject the CD, which is the ISO image. So the next, uh, when it reboots, it will automatically go to the configuration stage. And I will show you, it will have two interfaces, one for the external, one for private and we will have to choose those uh, when it when they when it comes up since the first virtual switch we created was external and the second one is internal uh, this HN0 should be the external, HN1 should be the internal. So let's say no to VLANs uh, because we're not doing any VLANs at this time. And let's pick HN0 for the WAN interface. First, we're configuring the WAN interface. And then um, it should be actually HN0. And for the LAN interface, we're going to pick HN1. And now we don't have any optional interfaces. Just press enter and it will confirm and you can say yes to proceed. So this is a command line um, operating system and uh, but you will have a web browser. You can go to the administrative interface to make changes. So if you look here, uh, the WAN interface picked an IP from DHCP server uh, from our host system and the internal system by default is configured to this IP range and we can change it uh, but let's keep it um, in the same network for now. So let's go to in, um, item level 7 to see if we can reach the internet. So you can ping cisco.com without any issues. So everything is good on this side and the next video we will see how to set it up so that our internal systems can also have internet access.